Everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday, and uh, we got a fantastic, fantastic show planned for you today. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. <clears throat> the first thing I want to talk about, I know we've been dealing with the phone. <laughs> you see, I had to, uh, when I went from the iPhone 6 to this new 13, uh, you know, some things changed. First of all, it was, uh, this camera is super, super sensitive to light, much more so than the other one. So I had, I changed this bulb that I have behind the camera. I had to cut it down to like a 10 watt bulb uh, incandescent. So, and I know you're saying it makes me look red, right? I know, but let me show you something that I found out. With just the flick of a button that I could change from. I could go from looking like this to looking like this to even uh, looking like this, like uh, black and white. So let me show you um, exactly what it is. And uh, I'll show you by filming it with my other camera phone. I'll show you um, how it is that you adjust this that I found out through trial and error. Okay, so here's what's interesting uh, that I found out from playing around. You see, this is my my iPhone filmed through it, uh, my old iPhone. And you can see it has a little bit of a pinkish hue to it, my face. Now, if you hit edit up here, you see up here, you just touch edit. Now what happens is uh, it will come up with a screen down here. And when you hit this uh, third one with the three circles, look what happens. You got original. Now watch what happens to the, uh, to the pictures as I touch each one. You can see that's vivid. That's uh, vivid warm. Vivid, cool. I don't. I hope it's picking up for you uh, uh, through here. Dramatic. You could see dramatic, warm. So I could change it uh, that way just by doing that. But unfortunately, it doesn't stay. Once you set it, it's only for that video. It doesn't. I don't know if there's a way to set that so it's always that way. So anyway, hopefully I can get rid of that pinkish you that has been making everybody uh, crazy. Okay, so hopefully we have one of the problems licked with this phone, but I'll get to it. I'll, you know, it took me 900 videos almost to figure out the iPhone 6, so I'm, it's going to take a while, but I'm getting there. Uh, hopefully uh, it'll be a, a, a worthwhile journey. Now, um, we had a good Memorial Day here, but uh, I have to tell you, I'm not a... Memorial Day for me is a somber holiday. I just sat around the house and, you know, I, I don't do anything. I don't party. I don't barbecue. Just for me, it's a somber holiday. I think about, you know, friends that I've lost or whatever. And it's, you know, but it's a good holiday, uh, especially for remembering uh, the veterans that have uh, sacrificed. But um, one thing I have to say is there's a parade that passes in front of my house. And... Um, I, I shot some video of it. Again, this is a great camera for, for videos and stuff, but I was tr testing it out. I shot some from my uh, front porch, and then I shot it from my attic just to see what it be, the differences and whatnot. And let me show you some of the parade that passes right in front of my house ever since I was born. You know, uh, this parade comes down and passes in front of the house for Memorial Day. And uh, check it out. that was nice and uh it seems like patriotism can be contagious because you know i remember last year uh, i was like the only one putting the flag out but uh you could see now i got all my neighbor i even put one up on my neighbor's flagpole because she's 95 years old and uh so i put it up and you know i maintain it and so i got the, and then they put it up on the pole so it's nice it's nice to see the flags flying out there and uh okay so with that we have an interesting uh a uh, show for you today. Like I said, it was fantastic. Let me show you what I meant by that. Okay, now uh, what we're going to start off when I said this was going to be a fantastic episode. Uh, I was actually talking about the fan part of it because today we're going to talk about making a poor man's air filtration system. A lot of you guys are in the shop. You're doing some grinding. You're doing some sanding. Uh, it's summertime for a lot of us here in the States. And you know what? 
it's a good idea to have an, an additional fan and especially one that can filter the air a little bit, take out some of the particulates of the things that we're sanding and kicking around. Uh, I have a really good one over there, but uh, you know, it's, it's expensive and a lot of you can't do this. This one here is uh, is affordable for everybody. And basically what it is, it's a box fan. I picked this up at Walmart and it's uh, made by Lasco. And what's interesting is this is a uh, made in the United States of America. And it was uh, like 23 or $24. But the reason they did have them as low is 19 But this one has a steel body. And it's uh, it's guaranteed for two years or something. So uh, here you go. Two-year limited warranty. And uh, we'll unbox this. And then I bought a couple filters. I'm going to make a poor man's air filtration system for less than $30. And, uh, and it's good for the shop. Let's check it out. Okay, so now that it's unboxed, you can see basically what it is. It's a standard. It's got plastic shroud, plastic blades. Again, that's what you're going to get. But it's a metal case around here. Lightweight. Uh, it comes with feet. You see these little feet here? Now, what you do is you break these apart, okay? And then we'll stick them in. I'll show you how that works. Now, once you break these apart, they just get pushed into these little slots here like this. Just push them down. And uh, lock them in. There you go. When they're locked in like that, they uh, they become uh, feet, so that they won't. Uh, that gives you more of a footprint on the fan, so it won't uh, tip over. Now this is a three-speed fan, so uh, we'll turn it on. You might get some wind noise here, but uh, that it starts with high. I'm trying to get the wind. If, if there's any wind noise, there's medium and there's low uh you can see right away there isn't a a tremendous balance to the blades but it's it's a good fan i mean for what it's going to be used for okay so now to make the filtration system okay to make your air purifier uh basically i got these at walmart you want to get these simple filters and what they are is this is uh 20 by 20 by one that's 20 inches square by one inch thick now there's a marking on all these filters, okay? And there's, you can't see because these are light gray, but this here, this is the lowest basic, what they call basic uh, here, um, form of filter. And that is because uh, the thicker the filter or the more protection it gives you, the more things it'll it'll cut out. For example, this is good for lint and household dust. You need, see what it says here? But if you went to the next one, it says mites and mold spores and pollen. So the better filter you get, the more of these black, uh, these things will be darkened in. But you do not want the heavy duty filters because you're going to wind up, you won't have the air uh, fil filtering through the fan and you could actually do damage to the fan. So you want the basic ones. And these are three for uh, $10, uh, I believe. So they, they run about, uh, you know, they're less than $4 a filter, whatever, when you buy them in a three-pack. And the more you buy, the more you save, obviously. This is what the filter looks like. It has two sides. It has the inside here. It has the outside with some grating on it. All you have to do here is take this on your fan and put it like this. Now, to secure it, I've seen some guys get crazy with bungee cords. you got to remember something, that the suction of the fan is going to hold this on by itself. So all you need is two, I'm going to use uh, a couple pieces of painter's tape just to hold it on there. You don't want to make a, you know, some guys go nuts with trying to seal it. You don't want to do that because if there is any flow problems, you want the air to get in there so your fan doesn't overheat. And uh, I'll show you how this will, why you don't need to hook anything really up. I'm going to turn the fan on here and watch what happens to the filter here. That's all, that, that'll hold it by itself. And it still gives you from, some flow through there. That's why you want a fan that is uh, a filter that isn't too, uh, that doesn't uh, capture too many particulates. Because if you do, uh, it, it's like putting a, a piece of cardboard behind it. You're really not going to get any flow. So this will give you flow. It'll get out a lot of the dust and debris that we deal with down here and keep your shop uh, pretty much clean. So there you go. You can see I put two pieces of painter's tape there. This way it won't damage any of the uh, painted surface up here. But you could see now how this will work. 
It's uh, it's a small little fan. You can put it anywhere in the shop, and it'll take away a lot of the uh, the dust that we deal with, a lot of the uh, particulates that float up even when you're walking around. And uh, the nice thing about this is the filters are cheap enough that you'll swap them out. You won't worry about, you know, a $3 filter changing it. You could look at it and see if it's getting dirty. And uh, it'll keep some circulation in the shop. So give it a try. I think, uh, I think especially if you're in a small shop like me with a lot of dust, you might like One it. One last thing is to uh, save your box that the fan came in because it's a great place to keep your spare filters so that they don't get uh, dusted up. You know, you put your spare filters in there, keep this closed and uh, and just store this somewhere in the shop. Okay, next up, when I told you this was gonna be a fantastic episode, now you know what I mean. Uh, I'm not a fan collector, okay? Let me put that right out there. However, I must have two dozen <laughs> of these old fans, at least, you know? I, I just pick up old, I don't know, now, I don't pick up the plastic junk ones like this one over here that I use for my shop. See that one right there? That's used for just, you know, basic, which is a good fan, but I like these old fans, these heavy duty ones. And, uh, you know, if I see them, especially for $5 or something, how can you pass it by, you know? And I, I'm a big motor guy. We're going to be getting into that next week or so. And so... Uh, here's a couple fans I picked up. I thought I'd run through. I don't even know. Tell you the truth. I don't know where I got them. I think this was my girlfriend's dad when he passed. And I, this one, I don't know where, I don't know where I got them. I know where I got this one. We're going to talk about that later. So let's, uh, let's show you what some of okay, these. Okay. Our first fan is this, uh, this cute little reproduction fan. This is, uh, what this is. It's made in India. Okay. And I'll show you the label here. This is made in, uh, it's a reproduction. Now, these were knockoffs of popular American-made or uh, uh, Europe, early European-made fans. And what they are is a, it's got the regular uh, induction motor here. It's got a, uh oscillating unit here that works. I'll show you how that works. Um, they make these in different voltages because they go around the world. This one happens to be 110 volts and 60 hertz because here it's, it says it right here. You see that? And uh, because it's made for the U.S. market. Um, here it has the slide switch, you know, with a variable speed, three, two, one, you know, it has so three speeds. Let's plug it in, see what it looks like and how it works. Hopefully it won't get too much uh, wind noise. And you know what's funny? They made these fans years ago with these little clips here. You see this clip? And you would pop these clips so you could take the grating off to for cleaning because they would always get dusty and whatnot. Uh, the problem is... They also have nuts and bolts here. So so this quick release clip, I don't know if this is done as a safety or whatever, but there's there's a one, two, three, four. So it's you know not so quick and easy to take it off, even though they got these clips. But let me show you how this particular fan uh works, what it looks like. I plugged it in. First we'll put it on. It always starts with the high speed first. You can see it works. Again, I don't know when the last time this has worked or oiled or something but it uh you can see the oscillating it's got a little motor a geared motor here that turns like this and that's what oscillates the fan always interesting let me turn it down here and i'll put it on low speed you can see low speed so I, I always found these interesting especially the old ones and again it's a knockoff but it looks very close to the original if you clean it up and this is like chrome. If you if you do it up nice, it's a nice addition to your uh, to your den. Next up, we have this beautiful little Westinghouse fan, and uh, this one's really a, a just made so beautifully, super strong. Probably I would estimate in the fifties, mid fifties, maybe. Some of you fan guys out there, you know, let me tell you, fan collectors are cool people, and there are a ton of different types of fans that uh, you know you can collect. But here you can see this one is is known. Westinghouse was known for making heavy duty stuff, and this is you could tell the weight of this is almost double what that India fan is. It's super heavy. It's got a heavy duty. Uh, you can see it's a heavy duty motor on here. The base, everything, even got a little bit of felt on the bottom to take away any vibrations. Uh, it's oscillating. Let me show you how this works. There's a little switch in the back here. We'll just give it a click. And look at this. Now, this hasn't been run in I don't know how long, but it has such a nice sound to it. These motors were so beautiful. And to work the oscillation, there's a little, uh, it's like almost like a clutch here. You just, when you tighten this down, 
that engages the oscillating motion. And you can see now here, we have it on a, uh, uh, I guess that's a, a medium speed. It looks like a two speed fan, but look how nice that works, huh? I mean, I don't know when the last time this thing was running. Tremendous airflow. I hope I'm not getting whisper. Tremendous airflow out of here. And uh, now you can see this is a, a four-bladed fan, but look at that, that curve. You know, it's a very aggressive fan blades. Very nice fan. Now, last up, I have this beautiful little Emerson fan. Now, I picked this up at the Long Island Tool Meet uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, I paid $5 for this fan. What a beautiful little fan this is, huh? But it needs work. It's got a little beat on. But I just wanted to have a little fun with this fan. And uh, so I'm going to do this for Friday's restoration. We're going to do this on Friday. Uh, I'm just going to do a cleanup. I wanted to... Uh, uh, to see if I can get it, you know, oiled up and clean or in good running shape. And But the blades, you see the blades are all kind of, you know, oxidized and stuff. I want to uh, spray the blades with maybe that, uh, uh, that copper colored paint that I like so much. So we'll do this on Friday. It's a, it's a nice fan. The thing weighs a ton. It works well. So let's see what we can do with it for Friday. I think that'll be a, a nice little project. Okay, so in closing, oops. There you go. Is that better? Is this color better for you? Uh, hope we straightened that part out. And uh, anyway, that's a, uh, you've spent 17 minutes. That went fast, didn't it? Good episode. I enjoyed it. Fantastic. <laughs> we'll finish that on Friday. Hope you have a great week. Take care now. Bye-bye.